We're back to the market. So we can't do both. Right? Sorry. Yeah, well, you can you only can vote once, but if you have a second choice, I can make a note of it. Because we're also open to creating hybrids. But right now, we just want to narrow it down to one or two. Um, so, can I see the hands up again for a market? Supermarket. Seems like you had the most commentary about the food hall. That's what I meant. Food hall. I'm sorry. I was thinking of public market, and that's what. What type of market? Um, small scale grocery store. They just put Trader Joe's on a fourth street. Okay, so let, let's do this again because. Uh, food hall. All right, so let's. Real quick, market. One, two. Okay. Oh, I, 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 I write both ideas. Really okay, so <laughs> next one is. Uh, How many for the market? Oh. Okay, can we do this just one more market. time, please, people? Oh, excuse me. Could you can, can I see a show of hands for the market? Because we're doing a, a good count. I like count. both ideas. What about one, two, three, four? That's four for the market. Okay. I got it. Okay. I got it. I like market. I think too. Yeah, I do. Because I can. Yeah. Okay. Put that, put that yeah. Market. So, uh, community yeah. restaurant. Community restaurant. One, two, three. One, two, three. Community restaurant. Yes, we put that in the chair. Four. Yeah, the food court. One. The food court. Yeah, this is the food court. And no, this is the restaurant. The, the final one would be the food court. There's a whole court. bunch of yeah. restaurants I can't afford. So, full court. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I saw it seven. And finally is the kitchen. The kitchen was no votes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the kitchen. Hey, we good on day one. Make a note of that. And this kitchen first. Thank you guys for your time. You. Right, again, uh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. We'll contact you again once the town hall is. We have to set the date for that. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So next. Next on the agenda is Recology. Hi, everybody. My name is Rosie. Uh, I do not actually work for Recology. I'm here tonight as your rate payer advocate. And we have Patricia here from Recology, who can answer any technical questions you may have. Uh, as ratepayer advocate, I'm here to inform you about the public process of Recology's application for a rate hike. I'm going to give you some information about that. But as ratepayer advocate, I am here to disseminate information, to answer the questions that I can, to encourage you to make your voice heard at any of the upcoming hearings. We have seven of them. Uh, and our second one is tomorrow morning. And if you're not able to go, then my team and I will be there to represent the community's interests as well. Uh, so as ratepayer advocate, our goals are to provide you with information, encourage you to come out and make your voice heard, uh, and to represent your interests. You can contact us on this sheet. We have website, email. We also have a phone. I know not everybody does email, but we have phone access in English, Spanish, and Chinese. Uh, and we also have a mailing address, so please feel free to mail us anything you like. You may have also received something in the mail for a Prop 218 hearing, which is another hearing on top of the seven that we're doing with the Director of Public Works. So why are the rates changing? Recology is applying to raise their rates to invest in new operational improvements uh, and service improvements. The increase for the first year would be 16.4%, or about $5.70 a month for the typical single family household. Um, I do want to point out, if you live in an SRO, it's a different structure, um, and they actually haven't finalized the commercial rate increase yet. But the public process is, it's not limited to, but it's more representative of the residential increase. Um, the second year, the rate increase would be 4.98%, 0% in the third, and 062 in the fourth year. So you have to just continue to raise constantly. <laughs> well, they are going towards new service improvements and new operational infrastructure. Uh, one is updating facilities, processing technologies, and infrastructure, also to accommodate for increased volumes of recyclables and also new statewide regulations for composting. How many, how many? Uh, purchasing new trash and recycling bins, supporting a new five-year labor agreement with their union partners, accounting for a new 15-year landfill disposal agreement, because the last one was... 30 years old, it's expired. Uh, we were not able to renew the rates that they got 30 years ago, unfortunately. Uh, and to establish
establish new outreach and education programs. On the back of this is a timeline to explain the public process. The application was the final application was submitted in February, and between then and now, we're holding a series of hearings: seven with the director of public works, one Prop 218 hearing, which is a statewide uh, proposition. Then in June, we'll go, to, go before the rate board, uh, and should the rates be approved, they will go into effect July 1st of this year. Um, you can also write in your letters of opposition for Prop 218, but I think if you'd like to come down and have your voice be heard, a lot of the, the things that are gonna get worked out in the meantime, as opposed to just writing in a letter of opposition, you can go in and really express your concerns about the programs, the prices, uh, how they affect you personally, and how you think that they affect the city. Like how much noise they make at 6 30 in the morning. See, I'm going to write that one. It would be a newer way. I mean, must be doing the trash. When I went to college, and I want to tell you how many years ago that was, uh, my apartment did face mm -hmm. where they went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every last little thing was stuck to the bottom of the dust And they, they did that, but they had daylight savings time outside my apartment. And I'm like, is it 6 30 or is it 5 30? I don't know how time it is, but it's like 20 minutes. I'm like, I've never heard them take this long. It's wow. the 21st century. So, are these kind of issues that we could bring up? Actually, yes. And I think some of the new infrastructure will probably help that. One of the biggest changes that they're making is right now, when your refuse gets picked up, there are two trucks that go by in the morning. You have one that's half of your recyclables and half of your garbage, the black bin, and then one that's compost. But that doesn't stop everywhere because not everybody composts. Now they're going to switch them around so that one entire truck is just recycling. Because a lot of that banging is because we recycle a lot more than we actually put into a landfill or we compost. And the bins aren't the right size. So part of this new program will be resizing the bins, automatically downsizing people's black bins. You can go back to your regular one if you need it. But upsizing your recycling bins and then changing how they pick them up so well, that there isn't banging and then they can actually... What I'm talking about is a commercial. I, my apartment is here <coughs> Ellis Street. I don't know which has like a big metal dumpster of the old fashioned kind. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just, I mean, I have, to, I have to shut my windows and put curtains up, but it was a hot night, so I had the windows all so that's why I'm concerned. Yeah. Sure. But I think about other people who are like dying of cancer or something yeah. in their apartments, and it's like, come on, elderly disabled people are living in this neighborhood, and it's an insane amount of noise. Anyway, it's fine. I will definitely that. I have one, but I'd like to offer. One of the things that's been suggested for the temporary because I have 
go next. I wait. No problem. Okay. I have inquired about these um, recycling bins because they take them from other places. A lot of them have the addresses on them of where they came from. Mm -hmm. I actually went to a business and told them that their recycling bin was down on Ellis Street, and they said that, that they don't need it because they called and reported it gone, and so they're giving them another one. And then eventually, they picked up. <coughs> Definitely, you can call that in. You can call 311 or Recology. Um, and over the last couple of years, Recology has taken over doing the abandoned waste and all of the citywide pickups. Um, and they have significantly shortened the amount of time that it takes to get them picked up. Before it used to take three or four days. Now it's usually three or four hours. Okay, I, I have uh, one point, please. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I just want to say that uh, the trash can, sometimes when they be dumped in the trash can, pick them up because people ran through the trash already. When they when they pick up the trash, they put it in truck, some of the trash go on the ground, mm -hmm. and the guy put the truck back on the sidewalk. The trash is still on the ground, yeah. and they should clean up behind themselves on that part. And also, I think everyone, I think all all the trash can have a lock on it because they keep they keep people from going into the trash. They keep the bug problems down, keep the rat problems down because. The way it's going right now is never gets place to never be cleaned up the way it should be if we keep going like it is. Thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, the, uh, at one point uh, the uh, recycle bags were given out uh, and dispensers were put into the, the, to the buildings. And then management decided uh, not to re renew that contract or whatever. The bins are there, but the actual bags for uh, recycling for uh, compost are, are not being handed out anymore. So, you know, I mean, if you're trying to teach us to recycle, telling us doing it for six months or whatever how long it was, and then stop, I mean, well, you know, if you're making us revert back to however, not giving us the tools to do it with. So, I mean, it's, it's just a simple fix, uh, you know, and, and encouraging the management of, of these buildings, and that's big, our biggest uh, and uh, in, in industry down here is management for firms. They're not, you know, the, you know, you have to impose on them that you know, if you want them to have zero waste, which is what we uh, have mandatory to force the city and county San Francisco, you have to do the tools to be able to do that. Yeah, one of the funding sources um, is going to outreach and education, and Recology has stated that they specifically want to work on multi-unit buildings, condos, and apartments. Um, we're going to be asking them some deeper questions on the how they're going to do that, um, but it is one of their stated goals. Uh, I just had an idea. Excuse me for. Okay, I buy these trash bags at uh, Co Hardware, and you know they cost. Okay, they cost like maybe uh, 20, uh, 15, 20 cents a piece. Why? Maybe we you could get some people to have a, a coin operated. Uh, you know, thing uh, uh, in, in the, that people can, you know, put a quarter in and get the compost bag. And I'll tell you why. It's because the, one of the things that happened in our building is that some people just decided to, you know, they saw the, the in, in the trash unit, in the closet where they shoot, you know, next to the chute, there was a dispenser, and they just helped themselves to, to you know, you know, more than they were going to be using. <coughs> So and they are expensive to buy. Yeah. So. I mean, also, I, I use my brown paper bags. Yeah, well. They yeah. yeah. Um, first of all, I just want to make a comment. Historically, Recology is one of the best-run companies globally. Uh, we, you only have to go to other inner cities to see how bad garbage pickups are. But one thing that's really important is the recyclables fund a lot of good programs. And years, a couple years back. We had a lot of people diving, you know, divers, mosquitoes, whatever they call them. They were grabbing the recyclables. Those recyclables that that Recology, you know, we accumulate for Recology, we need to make sure that the communities know what programs are being funded uh, with that because we, we just can't take it for granted. I mean, they really do um, help uh, unfortunate, you know, people. Yeah, absolutely. I want to pause just because I know you still have a couple of things on your agenda. Um, I don't want to take all of your time tonight. But if you do have questions, you can definitely go to our website. It's ratepayeradvocatesf.org. Uh, and then all of our contact information is on the front. 
And if you don't have a personal email, um, you can still submit any kind of concerns that you have on the website um, or call it in. Um, a couple things. One, I want to congratulate your college on one issue. The glide, the big trucks that empty the metal can, the glide church, their beepers are when they back out of there. So I'm really happy about that because it's right out my window, almost. I'm up here, but it's right outside my window. But I'm very happy that now they don't have this really loud and safe beeping at the three o'clock window. That's one thing. So congratulations on that. Two, I used to buy compost bags. When they got to be 12 for $9, and white bags are 60 for $5, um, they got out of my price range. They're not that expensive. Well, they are probably. They're a little bit expensive, but they're not that It depends on where you can buy them. But I agree that they should buy them free. And they should, they should be something yeah. free. This building, we actually have, they, they got out through the college year. We all have compost cans in the building. And we have probably one of the best recycling programs because about 80% of our Chinese and 30% of the rest of the people come down every day and put their compost in a big compost can to bring down recyclables and put them in the can. We also have from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. every day on the floors, our recycling cans are open for recycling. The only thing we need is recycling for people who do trash at night. Yeah. And I can't get our management to understand that there are people that don't recycle in the daytime who want to recycle at night, and we have to throw our stuff down the trash chute. Okay, okay. Uh, we need to wrap this up. Uh, so is there any other, one, 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 or, and then one more question, and then we have to move on to the next agenda. Next, okay. Thank you. Thank you so All right, thank you very much. Uh, Taylor, Thank you all for having us. I, uh, not as sexy as the uh, subject is, some things are pressing in the neighborhood, but we are opening a furniture store uh, in uh, basically 8th and Harrison. It's uh, the <laughs> site of the former, uh, I think it was uh, bus terminal. And uh, the store, I'm actually going to leave a few catalogs here. Um, it, we're in Los Angeles right now. We've been there for a couple years. Um, I've always had the dream of coming back to the city, born and raised here, want to be back in the city, and, and this is uh, kind of my foray back to back to the Bay Area. Um, the store itself is uh, modern furniture. It's probably not going to serve the entire community. However, one of the things that I did in LA and I will be doing here as well is we, we want to be involved in the community. We want to serve the community even though our product might not be something that everybody wants to buy. Uh, in Los Angeles, we partnered with uh, Project Angel Food, which is similar to Meals on Wheels up here. I think Meals on Wheels is still around, aren't they? Yeah. Am I doubting myself or uh, dating myself? Okay, so it's the same, same, same uh, type of uh, situation where they provide meals. We're gonna start looking for a uh, different, different type of, uh, of uh, community uh, projects that we can kind of get involved in. And us coming here and telling you about our store and kind of what we're doing is, is our first step in kind of opening a, a dialogue. Uh, coming back to the city, I want to be involved in the community. Um, this isn't uh, something that it's just a hands-off type business where somebody else is running it. It's my business. I'm involved in it. I want to be involved with the community as well. So uh, it's part, uh, coming here is also part of the process for the city to kind of present to you what the store is gonna be, what, what we're doing in the space. Um, you know, it's roughly around 4,000 square feet. Uh, so it's a fairly sizable space in, in uh, kind of eighth of in a Harrison area. Any questions? Yes. So why is it, why is it requiring So the name of the store is, it's a global brand. The name is used in other countries, and there are more than 11 locations. In the US, there's only my location in LA, and the second one here in San Francisco. We're not a huge, we're not, the type of furniture store we are, it isn't gonna be multiple locations in, in one city. So, you know, we'll be here, San Francisco, maybe some one or two other major metropolitan areas, but it's really because there's so many, so many stores worldwide. Um. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, I got several questions. I had, sure. I had someone who 